So in this one, we will be dissecting a blog for PayPal's company called Braintree, but on how they solved thundering heart problem. Okay. And this blog, this is how it looks. The link of this blog is in the iCard. You can find it on the iCard or below the description. You can find this thing. Right? And I would highly recommend you to read the blog. But here's the gist with a bit of sprinkle from my side. Right? Okay. So, thundering heart problem. A lot of you would have heard. But if not, it's a very interesting problem. So, thundering heart problem. The idea is simple. When this occurs, is if let's say you have a bunch of requests coming to a machine. And those requests fail due to machine being overwhelmed. What do you do? You retry the request because they failed. Now, because they failed, you retried. It made the request again. The machine was already overwhelmed. Now it made because of retries, the existing load was there. The retry load came. Now those requests started failing. So this keeps piling up and this is the thundering heart problem. A very simple solution that you think of this is exponential backup. That, hey, don't retry at every fixed interval, like one, two, three, like every one second. Don't do it. It would put load. Let's do exponential back off, like one, two, four, eight, 16, 32 seconds like this. Right? But this also does not work at PayPal. Right? So let's understand their architecture, their problem and their solution. So in this video, you'll understand how this seemingly complex problem has a very simple solution and one big life lesson on how you architecture system. Oh, let's start. So merchants API is what you have here. Let me start here. Okay. So the merchants in PayPal, they use dispute API. So whenever there's a dispute, merchant uses PayPal's SDK to call this. Right? Now this disputes, they is a simple HTTP request that comes and then they have to send it to a payment processor. It's an external system. We don't worry about it. Right. Now the traffic on this is highly irregular. You can't expect those disputes. It would not happen all the time. So you cannot that sometimes there will be huge number of disputes. Some other time there would not be a much. So the way they've architected the system is that they have architected the system such that they take the dispute in, they enqueue it in SQS, they use active job, and then they pass it to process service. Let me explain. So the idea is very simple. This is their SDK. They make a call to dispute APIs to register a dispute. Now dispute API, they dump it to SQS, but they use active job. Active job is like sidekick. It's like celery in Python, right? So they make it, so the framework or the package or the tool makes it easy for you to submit a job for background processing and then process it in the background. So dispute API gets the request. It enqueues it using active job. The worker picks that up. The worker picks that up and passes it to processor service. We'll dig deeper into processor service in a minute. So this is their existing flow. Now, what does, what is the core problem that they are seeing? Sorry, what is the, sorry, what is, we forgot to cover this now. So what is the core problem that they are seeing? The core problem that they see is, is that this dispute processing that they do is it, it faces cascading failures. When one thing goes down, it suddenly takes on everything with it. This is a classic indication of a thundering heart problem. For example, your job queue builds up, your synchronized processing doesn't work, your service gets overloaded, your connection started failing, you get synchronized request, sorry, you do synchronized retries and then leads to failure. Again, the classic thundering heart cycle that keeps happening. And what typically we do is when you are enqueuing something in broker and that doesn't get processed, it gets added to a DL queue, which is a dead letter queue that, Hey, after let's say retrying three times, after let's say retrying three times, I could not handle this process. I could not handle this message. So I put it in a dead letter queue. So, and this dead letter queue is something, it's not like you're rejected the request. It's like, I'll take a look like this needs a manual intervention. So when, there's a lot of cascading failures in processing. So once you put in the broker, your processor picks that up, but because it could not process it here. So let me explain. So here you had job enqueued here, processor pick, uh, the worker picked that up because this is a synchronous call. It tried processing. This was under load. So this could not handle it. This failed. It retried, failed again, retried. Failed again, so then it added into a dead letter queue. 
imagine there is a q here which is dead letter q so dead letter q is essentially the idea is that i am right now not processing this message but rather than stopping my entire processing pipeline i'll put this message in a dead letter q it's better if a human takes a look and fixes it that's the whole idea now dead letter q typically has very high monitoring standards so any message in dead letter q is oh what happened here but because of this thundering heard problem the dead letter q got filled up and it almost always requires a human intervention to understand what has happened because you don't know if it's a retrieval error or not because if it was a retrieval error it should have been retried earlier itself okay so let's see what process the service does what what is that this process service doing that it's causing this thundering heart problem so process service takes input over http here so active job gets a dispute right active job makes a http call to process service and when it does that what process service does is process service does not handle it process service has to talk to multiple processors they are called payment processors and it needs to send those multiple processors this request so process service essentially wakes up every few hours so when it makes a request process service stores it in its database so all the disputes that are there they get stored in process service database every few minutes or hours a cron wakes up it goes through all the recent submissions and then it batches them in huge zip files and sends them over sftp to payment processors imagine some payment processors are there it sends it to them right so what is doing there is this micro service that is created whose job is to accept the request in http buffer it in a database write a cron that wakes that picks that up batches it and puts it onto a payment processor that's what it is doing right uh, you whatever you are thinking that's right why do we need it that's the life lesson i was talking about <laughs> don't you don't need to create microservice for everything anti pattern microservices are anti pattern in most cases <laughs> you don't need a microservice okay so now this thundering heart problem led to this pile up and this writing and what not so the root cause of thundering problem is synchronized retries right how do you make it not synchronized you add a random delay that's it so the idea is super simple this seemingly complex problem of solving thundering heart it boils down to just adding a random delay called jitter and that solves the problem for them so what looks like huge problem add a random delay that solves it and that's one now what is jitter let's understand this jitter and different modes of jitter before we go to their final architecture that they used so jitter is essentially a random variation to delay that is added to desynchronize the retry attempts simple because i don't want everybody failing and everybody waking up after 1 second and trying it and then everybody failing everybody waking up after 2 seconds and trying you don't want that to happen so they break the retry convergence right and they scatter the retry attempt in a time window so this way your chances of handling more request is higher and it reduces the peak load because not everybody is trying at the same time now in jitter when you are adding jitter you have two options either you add whatever your back of delay was you add a random number between 0 and back of delay and you give that that's a full jitter or you do whatever your back of delay was that plus half of the difference between the back of delay right so this way you are waiting for that bare minimum time and then one random number between the half of it so that much you are waiting so rather than full you are waiting for half right so this again you can apply your own fancy logic to add a delay just add random 5 second any random number within 5 second it would work just fine right but the idea is to scatter your retries right okay but what is there so again jitter solved the thundering heart problem but what was the other thing that happened the processing service that they had they don't need a microservice for everything they did not need a microservice for everything so what they did is they got rid of this processor service and now their flow is actually much more simple their flow is this so earlier they had a processing service so what this workers were doing they were waking up they sorry not waking up they were consuming the message from this broker right and putting it into processing service processing was again buffering it in a database they had a cron they picked it up 
batch it and send it to processor. Why can't all of that logic be moved in the worker? Exactly. That's what they did. They moved this entire logic in this worker. That now when the disputes happen, they dump it over here. Worker picks that up, batches it and submits it. Simple. That's what they did. So they removed the processor service because it was an unnecessary abstraction. Now worker nodes directly submit the task to the processor. So they batch it and submit it. Super simple. Right? This is something that every single one of us should remember. You don't need a microservice for everything. There is a huge, there is a huge, uh, uh, there, there, there is a huge percolation of this information that for everything people create a microservice. Like design Instagram, like service, follow service, share service, subscribe service. Right? Who does that? Nobody should do it. Right? Think of implementation in your head. Don't try to abstract out every single thing unnecessarily. Nobody likes it. Because a good constraint that I personally operate with is thinking that, hey, I'm the only engineer going to building, going to build this, maintain this, monitor this and everything. With that constraint in mind, I, you typically tend to keep your architecture simple. Here we saw that unnecessary abstraction of processor service was added, which did nothing, which could have easily be done by this worker right? and it worked just fine. Right? So they removed the abstraction of processing service. Now active job gets this thing and right? it reads from this, batches it, submits it to a processor, done. No unnecessary processing that needs to happen with the abstraction in place, right? Two key lessons, simple solution, adding a jitter, solves a bigger problem like thundering herd. And second, get rid of your microservice, like some of your microservices, if you don't need that unnecessary abstraction, you don't need, just get rid of it. It keeps your architecture simple. And remember always simple system scale. It's easy to build complex systems. It's difficult to build system, simple systems but simple systems always scale right awesome so this is all what i wanted to cover in this one this is the blog that i've linked in the description down below below the description or in the i card i would highly recommend you to give it a rate it's a fabulous blog you will have a great time reading it so yeah, this is all what i report this is all what i wanted to cover in this one i hope you found it interesting hope you found it amazing that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton